the Oscar ceremony today. I mean, dear God. Uh, plus our own latest arts grants, same disease. You know, I can actually understand why Russia and China too thought the West would be a pushover. Chinese academics write about this all the time, how we're tearing ourselves apart with our race politics and our gender wars too, our childish, self-obsessed, tribalist obsession with our identity. Well, today, Oscar ceremony, Hollywood's biggest night, all that rubbish was on full display. Three female hosts whinging still about men and then each announcing that they represented their race or in the case of Wanda Sykes their sexual preference she's gay but also this twist you know proud to be black proud to be gay but ashamed to be white this year the academy hired three women to host because it's cheaper than hiring one man <laughs> representing black women who are standing proud. Yes, and I'm and living out loud. Yes. 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 And I am representing unbearable white women who call the cops when you get a little too loud. Okay. <laughs> oh, cringe, cringe, self-flagellation. The left's new anti-white racism, you see it right there. No wonder the Oscars ratings keep tanking. This is also tribal, you know, my team black, your team bad. Maybe China's state media is right up to a point about the US tearing itself apart. Now, we could sit back here and say, well, the Oscars, you know, that's different. Hollywood is crazy town. But you just look at the new woke rules for Oscar winners, by the way, that are set to come in in two years. For instance, if the cast and crew of your movie isn't 30% black, gay or disabled, you'll be disqualified from the Oscars. And it's, say, you know, one of the main characters is black or gay or some other oppressed minority, or your whole story is about them or about women. Doesn't matter if you're filming Shakespeare's King Henry V or a film about Van Gogh. I mean, where are the blacks? Where are, where are the gays? Why aren't more actors in wheelchairs? It's so insane. But the trouble is, this is it's not just limited to Hollywood. This ludicrous identity politics is poisoning our own arts scene as well. Just look at the latest arts grants handed out by the Australia Council. Our top arts funding body handing out your money to artists it thinks should get an income even if some can't find an audience to feed them. And all the same themes regularly appear. You know that manic obsession, onanistic, look it up, this onanistic Obsession with gender, race and sexuality. What's in your pants? And of course, the tearing at this society that gives them freedom, safety and free money. Just three examples of this free money from the latest round of grants. There's $50,000 going to a performance artist, Harriet Gillies, whose website explains her most recent show like this. Expect a TED Talk on acid a performative lecture on mushrooms, storytelling whilst popping names. It will probably definitive, definitely end with Harry getting naked and putting something up her butt. But like, you know, in a really arty and compelling way. And here she is describing her breakthrough show. Even the first show I did here before the Flying Nun had started, we smashed 35 watermelons on the floor. Squashing watermelons? Seriously? And then there's $33,000 to artist Abdul Abdullah, who identifies loudly as Muslim, who lashes out to that big favourite of the left, Australia's supposedly monstrous racism problem. I'm a seventh generation Australian directly descended from a convict who arrived here in 1815. His name was Charles Blinman and he had a son called Charles and he had a son called Charles and he had a son called Charles and he had a son called Percival and he had my father and my father changed his name to Ibrahim and he had three boys all called Abdul. I'm building a collection of nationalist memorabilia. What's interesting for me is where it goes from straight like, national pride, like things that you have on Australia Day, to nationalism, 
and straight up fascism. Australian flag. Another $19,000 goes to an artist called E.O. Gill, who already got $30,000 from the New South Wales government. As a gender non-binary artist who explores this identity policies as proving for him, or I should say they, they prefer they, it finds all this quite rewarding in terms of grants. And after all, without taxpayer funding, where would this identity politics be? Now, if you think all this is a joke, let me remind you, you're paying for all this, even if 99.9% .9 of you would never go and see it yourself. You've got to ask why we're subsidising this stuff. High art? It's not. Inspiring? It's not. Popular? It's not. It's not even very original. It all follows the same tiresome leftist script that we've been hearing for years now. Australia racist. Conservatives evil. Whites oppressive. Blacks and gays and women, all victims. And race, please, let's divide ourselves by race. This is not art. It's politics. Crude and divisive politics. Funded by you.